Hi there, welcome to the Upcycled Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. And today I'm going to demonstrate how to make fused glass beads using recycled bottle glass and a microwave kiln. So we'll go through cutting the glass, fusing the glass, finishing the glass, and then if you stick around till the end, I'll demonstrate how to make that into a fused glass bracelet. Now, if you're not familiar with microwave kilns, they are exactly what they sound like. They're small kilns that go in your microwave and heat up to fuse the glass. So they're a very affordable way to test out this craft if you're interested in learning a little bit about glass fusing. And if you're interested in learning more about fusing glass, I will link to some other tutorials that I've made on making earrings, just learning a little bit about your kiln, and also how to do impressions in glass. And those links will be in the description box. So the supplies that you're going to need are some glass, obviously, and I just have some broken pieces of a empty wine bottle here. And I like to have a little tray to do the cutting in just to catch the glass shards and try to keep everything tidier and safer. Um, I also use a paintbrush. You could use a bench brush just to do a little bit of cleanup to make sure that I'm getting the shards in the trash and not letting them stay on my countertop. And uh, you want some safety glasses as well and some gloves to wear while you're cutting the glass. And today I'm just going to be using a simple pair of the wheeled glass cutters to cut the glass. For the fusing process, you're going to need your microwave kiln, your some fusing paper, and for this project, you're going to want some, uh, some large pieces to protect the kiln and also some smaller pieces to make the holes in the beads. So I just save all of my scraps of fusing paper as I'm working on projects, so I always have some little pieces to use. You want your heat resistant gloves because the kiln will get very hot in the microwave. And then you'll want some sort of notebook just to keep some notes about the fusing process, how long your kiln takes to heat up, how long it takes with certain projects if you repeat your projects over and over again. And you'll want a little pair of scissors to cut the fusing paper. Once your pieces are fused, they may have a few sharp spots on them, so you're going to want some sandpaper. I like to use this sharpening stone. It was very affordable. I got it at the Dollar Tree, so um, it just holds up well, and it's good for just knocking down those tiny little uh, rough corners and rough edges of your glass. And last, you're going to need your jewelry supplies. So from this project, I'm going to be using some 20 gauge wire, my round tipped jewelry pliers, a few jump rings and some jewelry clasps. So here's what a typical bead looks like when you've once you've finished fusing it. They are kind of oblong and misshaped. They're not perfect shapes, so they're sort of rudimentary and they should have a nice round shape on the top and the back will be flat and pick up some of the texture from the fusing paper. So they're not perfectly round beads. They do end up sort of in these oblong flattened shapes. But I think that makes them pretty and kind of interesting. So I'm using this technique on the recycled bottle glass, but you can also use it on purchased glass, which will probably have a slightly more uniform finish to it just because you're working with flat glass and it's easier for you to cut. But like I said, I like to recycle things. So the, the first thing you're going to need is to break your bottle if you are using recycled glass. And you can use a bottle cutter if you want to, but you can also just carefully break the bottle. You can see that I'm working with very on uniform pieces here but what I want to do is just cut them into small squares. So I'm going to be using these wheeled tile cutters and you want to have your safety glasses on just in case any glass shards are flying around and for these beads you want to cut your squares roughly at a half of an inch and you'll see when I'm finished cutting that these do not come out with totally smooth cuts and generally I don't worry about that because the beads are kind of not that uniform anyway. If you want to do a little better job of cutting and careful cutting, you can certainly do that. I'm just kind of lazy when I do my cutting. So I like to grip the glass and then I just cover the 
pliers up while I'm pinching the glass just to keep the glass from flying around and hopefully just hopefully it will just drop into my pan here. So you can see that with a piece of glass that size I got a fairly nice straight cut but you don't always and it doesn't really matter you want to just kind of end up with a rough square that's about a half an inch. So I'm going to continue cutting. For each bead I need two pieces this size and I'm going to make four beads in the green color. So I'm going to cut seven more pieces that are roughly this size. So I've got my eight pieces of glass cut into little squares and you can see that they're far from perfect. And then I've gone ahead and I've cut a piece of my kiln paper to fit on the base of the kiln here. You can cut a circle if you want to. I think that just kind of wastes the fusing paper. You just want to make sure that your glass is, that your fusing paper is between your kiln base and your pieces of glass. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do the bead fusing. The first way is the simplest, but I prefer the second way just because I like to use a little bit heavier wire. So I need a slightly larger hole in the bead itself. But the first way that you can do the bead making is by just taking your pieces of glass and spacing them out so they are going to have enough space between them so they don't fuse together and then you want to just switch to your scrap pieces and you're going to cut a very thin strip of the fusing paper to lay between the two between the glass layers so what i mean by that is i'm just going to cut a very skinny piece of the fusing paper and then i'm going to lay it on top of my glass and plate and then I'm going to place another piece of glass on top and I want to kind of offset the corners a little bit so that the shape will become more rounded and, instead of having pointed edges so that's why I've kind of offset those um, two pieces of glass so if you wanted to fuse the glass that way it will work and you will get a small hole in the in the beads but I like I said, want to have a larger hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the fusing paper and I want to cut a second strip that's about the same width because this will make the impression a little bit uh, larger. Now you can try stacking the glass the way I just showed you with one layer, but I've had a lot of problems with the glass slipping around in the microwave kiln as the glass is fusing and even as you're setting it in the microwave. So what I've started doing is doing a two step process. So I've laid down the two layers of the fusing paper and now I'm just going to set one piece of glass on top and it may lean to one side or the other but you want to have the fusing paper centered as much as possible on that piece of glass so I'm going to repeat that on my four more pieces of glass so I've got my two pieces here and again I'm just going to lay them on the fusing paper and if you have a curve in the glass it's easier if you kind of put the curve over the Fusing paper just helps to keep things from slipping around too much. If you're going to be using really thin cording or something to string your beads, then I would just use the single layer and you can fuse everything all at once. But I want a little larger hole in the beads that I'm working with. So I'm going to go ahead and put this through the fusing process and then we'll take a look at it and we'll do the second phase of the fusing. The fusing times can be a little bit confusing when you're just starting out because different wattages of microwaves will affect how quickly your kiln heats up. 
I've also discovered recently that different manufacturers of kilns will fuse at different rates as well. So you're going to want to follow the instructions that come with your kiln. And like I said, take notes so that you learn the parameters of your kiln and you know roughly how long it takes with your microwave to fuse the glass. What you're looking for in the glass when it's fully fused is a nice rounded dome top to the piece and also an even yellow or orange glow. And the way the fusing process works is that you're going to heat the microwave up and check your piece periodically and you will just learn as you go whether to add an extra minute or just 30 seconds. It's just kind of something that you learn the more you do it. While we're waiting for our green pieces to cool down, I thought I would show you what they should look like when they come out of the kiln in the first, uh, first fusing step. So if I carefully lift them up, you should see that the glass piece is fused around my two pieces of fusing paper. And they're not going to be stuck in there so you want to be a little careful you don't want to knock them out and the other thing you'll notice is that there's a little bit of kiln paper left on the glass itself so what I want to do is I'm going to flip these pieces over all of them and I am trying not to damage my fusing paper too much because you should be able to reuse this piece. I, generally speaking, the fusing paper is used one time and then disposed of, but since I don't want to disturb my pieces too much here, I'm just going to turn them over on the existing fusing paper. The other thing you might see is that if you didn't get your piece centered very well, um, like I did on this one, I'm going to want to compensate for that with my other piece of glass. So first I'm going to turn them all over gently and make sure that I keep the fusing paper in place that's making that little channel. And if you do damage your base piece of fusing paper, you will want to replace it. But as long as it's between the kiln and the glass, you should have your kiln protected. So before I put any more glass on here, I wanna clean off the fusing paper that's stuck to the bottom of the glass here. And to do that, I'm just going to take a Q-tip with a little bit of water on it and brush off as much of that fusing paper as I can. So I've got my Q-tip with just a little bit of water on the tip here, and I'm just going to move away that fusing paper that was stuck to the glass. You don't want to saturate any of your fusing paper, so just use a tiny bit of water and your glass pieces will have a little bit of a frosted look on the back of them anyway, so if you don't get every single bit of the fusing paper off, you probably won't notice it anyway. But sometimes it, it, you have a lot more stuck to your pieces than others, so this is just a tip for getting that cleaned off so that you don't have it fused in the middle of your glass. So next I'm going to take four more pieces of my little squares and I'm just going to lay them on top. And again, I want to kind of offset the corners so that I'm going to encourage my pieces to fuse in a more round shape. And if you have something like this where you have your fusing paper not very well centered, you can kind of try to compensate by putting a little more of your top piece of glass on the other side of the fusing paper. But as I mentioned, these are sort of rudimentary shapes once they're done. So I don't worry too much about trying to get them too perfect. One thing I may not have made very clear is that you definitely want your fusing paper to extend beyond the glass because you want the hole to go all the way through your bead. So these are ready for a second firing and this probably will take a little bit longer just because I'm using a different kiln and there's a little bit more glass in the kiln this time around, but it should be roughly around five or six minutes total fusing time. But that's just because I kind of know my kilns and my microwave. Your times may vary a little bit. So while my yellow and green glass are cooling down, I'll show you these clear pieces that I've done the double fusing technique on. 
They should look somewhat like this. They ha should have a fairly nice round appearance and they will have the fusing paper still stuck in between the layers. So you can remove the paper a couple of different ways. First, you might wanna just break the ends off. And I usually just rinse them down so that I can clean off the backs as well. And then I have a piece of wire, and as I mentioned, I'm using the 20 gauge wire, which is why I wanted these larger holes. And so to get the fusing paper out of the channel here, I'm just gonna use my wire to kind of push it through and clear out that space. And if you want to, you can do this under some running water, uh, however you want to kind of just clear out that channel so that you can string your beads on. For some folks, this fusing paper can be kind of a skin irritant, and so you want to be sure to wash your hands after you handle the fusing paper. And uh, so that's why I usually just finish up with some water and wash my hands and the beads to get rid of the dusty fusing paper that's left over. So our last step to finish these little beads is to knock down any little pointed edges. And hopefully you can see that little pointed tip on this bead here. It's pretty round and nice and uniform, but it does have that one little point. And to knock it down is very easy. It just takes a couple of seconds. And you can file as little or as much as you want, but you do want to not have anything that's gonna catch or get caught. So just check each bead and if you need to, you can file down or sand down any little pointed spots. So I went ahead and finished the yellow beads and the green beads. And you can see that they are a little bit wonky in some spots. They're just sort of a more organic shape than perfect shapes. And I've kind of filed these down. I might file them down a little bit more, but um, they're not sharp, but they do have sort of some little weird angles on them. And the next thing I want to do is I have some other beads over here that I might integrate into the project, but I'm going to go ahead and string them into a bracelet. I've already made a couple of other bracelets and I need about eight beads to make a seven or seven and a half inch bracelet. So I'm going to make this next bracelet out of my green beads and I just have some clear beads and then I'm going to use these little yellow spacer beads. And as I mentioned, I like to put the use the 20 gauge wire because it's just a little heavier and you could string the wire straight through the beads but then you'd end up with a very very stiff bracelet and so what I like to do is string a few beads on the wire and then hook those bead stacks together so that I get a more drapey bracelet so I'm gonna start with my 20 gauge wire I just have a short piece of the wire and I'm gonna make a small loop at one end and then I'm going to try to straighten it out just a hair and then I'm going to string on one of my spacer beads and one of my glass beads and another spacer bead Oops. And then I'm going to consider that one bead stack. And first I want to bend the wire so I kind of secure those beads in place. Then I'm going to trim my wire to about a half an inch. And roll that wire back. until it meets the wire again. And then I've got one little bead stack. So to make my second bead stack, I'm gonna go ahead and coil my wire one time around. Straighten it out a hair. 
Make sure I've got my loop closed. Slide on a spacer bead. And another glass bead. Bend the wire to lock the beads in place. And you can string on more beads than this, but I like the bracelet to swing and be kind of loose and shape around my wrist. So now I'm going to trim my wire again. And this time I want to look, hook it through my other bead stack loop before I close off this loop. So you can see I've got a lot of nice drape and swing to this so far, and I'm just going to carry on until I attach all the beads together. When I'm making the two end pieces, I like to add a couple of spacer beads instead of just the one, just for variety's sake, I don't know, and sometimes you need a little extra length. So when I'm, I'm attaching these last two beads, I'm going to put two spacer beads and then my glass bead and one more spacer bead. And then again, I'm just going to bend the wire to hold the beads on. Hopefully sometimes they do like to slide off. And then I want to trim my wire about half an inch long. I'm going to add my chain to the wire there, and then I want to be sure to wind the wire back up toward the coil or the where I've bent it, not down toward the. I'm not sure if that's making sense. I don't want to ro roll the wire down, I want to roll it up toward my bend. Catching the chain that I just hooked on and tucking my wire under my spacer bead. And if you need to, you can go back and sort of tighten up your connections and you'll get better at kind of determining how much wire you need to leave on each end of the wire when you're working with it. Sometimes you can cut off a little too much or not enough. And I'm still learning. Mine aren't perfect either, but I have gotten a little better as I've been going along. So I'm just going to use a couple of jump rings to attach my hook for my bracelet, and that'll be finished. I apologize, I did not mention these two needle nose pliers in the tools that you need, but whenever you're working with jump rings, it's very handy to have two pairs of needle nose pliers. So I'm just going to grip them on one side of the slit and twist them apart just to open up that split a little bit. I'm going to twist, not pull. And I'm just going to add one jump ring to the end of my bracelet and then just do the opposite twist to close that jump ring back up. And then I'll use the same procedure on the second jump ring, but I want to add my jewelry hook to this ring as well. So I'll just oops, slide my jump ring through and add the jewelry clasp. And close my jump ring and I've got a finished bracelet. Hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video and tap subscribe to join my YouTube community. You can check the description box for more 
glass fusing tutorials, and for a link to sign up to receive the Upcycle Design Lab newsletter. Or check out more from the Upcycle Design Lab in the links below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.